Okay, our next speech, speaker is Annabelle Gerwich. Uh, she's a New York Times best-selling author. She was the host of that awesome show on TBS. It was called Dinner and a Movie. Remember that show? Oh, I love that show. And she's, she is a Jewish secular humanist who announced she was an atheist at her bat mitzvah. Perfect. She's happily stuck with that label ever since. Her first car was a faded beige Chevy Monza. Wow. And her first piece of music that she bought with her own money was an eight track of Earth, Wind, and Fire. Another one. Please welcome Annabelle Gerwich. Hello, it is so great to be here amongst my tribe of fellow atheists. I uh, want to use my time here today to introduce you to someone who I feel really exemplifies what it means to be an American atheist. So I'd like to introduce you to retired Lieutenant Colonel Tom Gray. Tom served 24 years in the Army. He served in Afghanistan. He served in Germany. He served at Fort Campbell. He's the father of four girls. And he is the founder of the Outfit uh, Atheists at Outfit Air Force Base in Omaha and the president of uh, Omaha Atheists. Tom. You know, I lead a, a privileged life. The only danger I've ever been in is I shot a movie where I was in a hot tub with Rodney Dangerfield. So, uh, you know, the life that you lead is, uh, is, uh, was, is very different than mine. And Tom, come, come here. I want to talk about what it means for you. I know what it's like for me to be an atheist in my community. I don't suffer personally. I don't, I don't, I, I'm not marginalized personally. People don't identify me in that way. But for you, I want to talk a little bit about what your experience is like and what the experience is like for someone who's a free thinker or an atheist in the military. Yeah. Well, uh, Annabelle, I, I'm glad that I can say that my experience in the Army was good. They, they observed the separation of church and state. I'll give you an example. We had a company commander at Fort Campbell who stood in front of his, stood in front of his company formation and announced that they would have no Wiccans in their company. And the next day, he was gone. And that's because the Army was doing things right. And we need to get all the services on that same standard. Um, I think we have to say that, you know, one of the reasons they're doing things right is because people like you are holding our, what has been traditionally a theist organization accountable. So I, I want to talk about an experience you had with a military chaplain because one of the big issues for atheists and free thinkers in the military is that they don't have a chaplain that is dedicated for your population. So tell us about that. Tell us about the experience you had. Yeah, thanks, Annabelle. Uh, I think it's very important to remember that we're not fighting people. We're fighting ideas. We are fighting bad ideas. And I'll give you an example of a bad idea. Uh, my last duty station was uh, off at Air Force Base. I was at uh, Strategic Command Headquarters. The installation chaplain, name is Dave, he's a good man, uh, I approached him about doing an Ask an Atheist event. And he said, no, no, can't do that. I'm not allowed to support anything that's not religious in nature. Okay. Uh, I attend his weekly Bible studies, and they were fun. They have PowerPoint slides. The Army fights with PowerPoint, and so does the Air Force. Uh, PowerPoint slides every week. And in the middle of one of his talks, he had two slides. And he made several points. He said, first, that atheists are liars because everybody believes in God. He said that atheists are, liar, are lying because they're angry. And he said they're angry because they don't have a good father figure in their lives. And also they're morally corrupt, but hey, that's okay. We're all morally corrupt because of original sin. And I can tell you, it floored me. Here was my friend Dave. You know, I, I talked with him, I trusted him. He's a good man but he's got a bad idea. And this bad idea caused him to do something that I feel he should not have done. I had to point out to him that, hey Dave, up to this point, we could have a conversation, but you've just told the 20 people here at the Bible study, they don't need to listen to me because I'm an angry liar with daddy issues. And he said, no, no, Tom, I, I didn't mean you. I mean all those other atheists. I said, Dave, 
I'm in the Omaha atheist group. Uh, I've known atheists all my life. You haven't described any of those people. And to his credit, he helped me do the paperwork. He endorsed me. We created the Offutt Humanist Organization to serve the free of faith at Offutt Air Force Base. I think, I think this kind of example, Tom, really shows what we need to do, how we can be actionable. So you take a situation like that, and that, that inspires you. you. You saw a need, and you took an action. Now, uh, I like also what you guys are doing on base. And I think what you've talked to me about is they're very uh, family-friendly, family-positive activities, which helps give a different face to people, particularly in the military, who say, I've never met someone who's an atheist that they know. Uh, and so what kind of things do you guys do? Uh, in the last year, we do social events. In the last year, we've done a couple of barbecues. We did, uh, during the winter, you know, go out to the, uh, do the water slides. There's an indoor water park in Omaha. But more importantly, we got to do a separation of church and state educational event, a display, at the state capitol. We were one of uh, seven groups that did this. It was a big success. We're going to do it again this year. Reaching out and letting people know that we exist is our number one job. Uh, military, whoa. The Military Association of Atheists and Freethinkers is working hard to get humanist chaplains in our military to serve us. It's not going to happen if we don't show that there's a demand. Uh, there's organizations on 100 different installations uh, being present. Be part of those groups or go out and create one. It's easy, it costs you nothing. A couple hours on the internet, write yourself up a charter, get the signatures, your commander will sign off. You can operate on base, you can advertise in the newspaper, you can make it happen. Do it for yourself because it's fun. Do it for the other people on your installation who think they're the only atheists out there. And do it for the future generations coming after us in our military. Uh, I, I just want to say thank you again, Tom. You really, uh, you show us how to lead the way. One of the things that you mentioned to me was that your group did, um, you, 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 were, you do events where you uh, feed uh, teenagers who are in crisis, uh, homeless teenagers. And I think to see members of the military who identify as atheists for these young people, it shows them another path, a new, a new avenue for them, and a great example. So again, let's learn from, let's learn from re retired Lieutenant Colonel Tom Gray. See a need, identify it, stand up, and uh, take some action in your community. Thanks, thanks so much for being such a light in the community. Thank you, Annabelle. Thank you much. Fantastic.